evening everybody. What a joy to be here in the posh half of the Midlands. I'm not sure Actually, I was going to say the rough half of the Midlands, but I thought I wouldn't offend you. Happy National Poetry Day! As poets, we get so excited about National Poetry Day, because hooray, at last, today, all about us. And I think sometimes we can forget that the rest of the world isn't quite so enamoured. I've got two little boys and this morning I ran into them and I shouted, Happy National Poetry Day! And my eldest son, who's five, looked at me and said, Happy National Noetry Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, in honour of him, I'm going to start with a dreamy poem called Yam Yams Diner. Yam Yams is quite a cheeky word for people from the black country. But this is sort of a road not taken poem in which I dream of jacking in the poetry and getting myself a little job in one of those greasy spoons you sometimes see on industrial estates and laborers in the Midlands. <laughs> <laughs> Yam Yam Steiner. Somewhere, beyond all this, I'm elbows down on the counter in Yam Yam's diner. Sunflower oil slick in my ponytail, blue t-shirt, ruby apron, our lady of perpetual sucker, all a hard-working man might stoop to kiss the knuckles off, stagger out in the diesel yellow morning yearning for a taste of, serving a little chick and bat. Tea slurry with sugar, bacon with a sly crisp of skin, bread thick as a dictionary, flip to the entry, clam to jet. And I'd love them, the men, in their overalls and boots you could stamp on the toes of, the tired ones, the trodden, the young, their chin still soft with bum fluff. I'd hold their dreams so tenderly, understanding that there's no heaven but this, a grease-spangled porter cabin. The rhyme their body yields when it's finally full. So get it whilst you can. By three, I'll be gone. Tables white, shutters down. Already feeling the afternoon sun on that soft, bare spot on my neck. The scent of fat and salt swinging like incense as I pull out the pins and let loose my hair. about that daydream, he always says, Chick, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a love poem about him. Um, it's called Stone. And I like to think it's a love poem for a really particular kind of black country man. Although on my travels in life, I realise that these sort of gems everywhere. Stone. When you bought me a milk pan for Christmas, a woman at work said you were as romantic as a stone. Watching you that evening, I wondered what kind of stone she'd meant. A chip of car park gravel or something fancier, like the peridot in my mother's engagement ring. My interest in you became geological. <laughs> Pulling on your wellingtons to walk the dog in the rain. You were granite, durable, funereal almost. Under backwater, you were the agata found on Brighton Beach as a child, sleek and mottled as a seal skin. Other times, you seemed a rarer gem. Not emerald or talpas. Nothing any other woman would wear at her throat, but plainer, more lovely, 
like the limestone wall in the caverns back home that purified the iron in blast furnaces where keepers drip jet from their beading brows. And a man like that would never choose a rose or a diamond ring. He'd stand for hours in a shop on the coldest day, testing the unfamiliar weight of a pan in his hand, <laughs> assessing its metal, Imagining how that milk would taste on my tongue as it poured, steaming from that perfect lip. <laughs> so that story does have a very happy ending because 20 years later, we're still together and we've got two kids, although. I obviously, well, neither of us have learned anything because last Christmas bought me a glue gun for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> now, I like crafting as much as the next person. <laughs> and here's something else I like. I live in Birmingham, near to a beautiful wild park called Highbury Park, which is beloved by many kinds of lovers. And I wrote a poem about it, but every time I introduce it, I always feel compelled to say that this is the Highbury Park in Birmingham and nothing at all to do with football. Because um, after this poem was published online last year, all of a sudden, I had quite a few bemused Arsenal fans following me on Twitter. <laughs> Although I like to think to myself that some of them may have found all they were looking for in this poem. <laughs> Highbury Park. In the woods at night, men are fucking amongst the gorgeous pinatas of the rhododendrons, <laughs> the avenue of cool light. By day, I walk my son down the secret pathways, smell the salt rhyme of sex on the wind, a condom glowing with blossomy corn, <laughs> knotty and flung, <laughs> bury it gently under the moss with my boots. I envy them, these lovers, dark pines beneath their knees, the tarry earth alpaline with the desire paths of snails, fallen feathers in the dirt like warnings. I know those days of aching to be touched by no one who knows you. After he was born, I wanted nothing but the wind to hold me. The soft mouth breeze, coaxing my skin like the grass from a trampled field. How heavenly it seemed then. Light shafted emerald through wounded leaves, the woods a church, we its worshippers. And all that set. Freed from love and duty, but being taken by the wind, swept from the cloistered rooms of your life, stripped and blown, then jilted, dazzling in the arms of the trees. Official poet in residence. <laughs> I'm sure the call is coming. <laughs> and I'm just going to finish with a little tender hearted poem. A poem about home. Near where I live in Birmingham, there's a, a blue wall. And one day I walked past and saw and I'd written on it in pencil Be happy with what you've got. And it really made me think. So I'll end with this one. Thank you for listening. Blue Heaven. Our poem, which art in blue heaven, give us this morning daffodils spinning spring song like yolk, moss falling in the guttering, snug for wet the beds, Jenny Wren and weeping birch watching over us, 
I will answer the emails on half-built Lego palaces, milk cups and toast crumbs. Photographs of us in the 90s, drunk and so in love, we look like children. Give us griefs and small kindnesses. Once upon a time, in clumsy boy's hand on the back of a phone bill, library books and Germany, sanitary towels soaked with stinking rubies, pyjamas shed beneath the bunk beds like adder skins, money spiders, stories. The nights we touch in darkness with that wild honey milk of recognition. Tenderize our hearts to all that is holy. The dog in a blanket. The playgroup collage. And forgive us our trespasses. Pulling tight the shutters on our hearts when others are knocking. Cussing in the night when we stumble to the cot. Teach us to love each other as the tree loves the rain, never wasting a drop.